So when we're talking about organisms, we also can't forget to talk about kind of the bigger picture. So for example, if we're talking about energy going from one thing to another, or how stuff interacts, we can't forget that we also have to think about where they are as far as like where they are in the environment. What does their environment look like? How does their environment change? Stuff like that. The first topic that deals really with the environment directly is called succession. So when you say think of succession, we're thinking of like a king, like an old king dies and his young son takes his place. So now the prince is a new king. He succeeds him and he becomes a new king. Succession is when one thing takes over for another. The first thing that actually made up land, it wasn't a bunch of dirt. It wasn't a bunch of grass or weeds. It was probably just rock. When you have an environment like rock, there are only specific things that can grow on rock. Rock is not going to be good. I can't just throw a bunch of apple seeds on a pile of rocks. They're not going to be able to grow. So something has to be able to grow on rock for this to kind of advance. Our ground looks like rock largely from volcanoes and all kinds of shifting of plates. And what happens is you have fault lines and little volcanoes with magma that goes down in the earth. It comes out to the top, spills over as lava, and then when it cools, you get that rock. This might make even more sense if you think of the ocean, and out there in Hawaii was initially nothing. Volcano erupted, magma goes everywhere, and then before you know it, that magma has cooled into rock, and you now have the island. So here we go, we got an island in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of the water. If you threw a rock in your backyard, the first things that are going to actually start growing on it are going to be some of the small slimy stuff that's usually green or kind of dark brown, usually like the algaes and the mosses. So the first things to even populate this area, they're going to be growing on this rock on the top. They don't need a lot of roots, they don't need to burrow their way in too much, but they're going to start to kind of take over this rock. We're going to call these lichens and mosses. Lichens, not like werewolf, like it's just a type of moss. What's going to happen is they can kind of work their way in, erosion happens, weather happens, and you're going to get little tiny cracks into the rock slowly, slowly, slowly. The more and more you have these cracks, you can actually have larger and larger plants grow on it. So right now we just have a bunch of lichens and mosses, but what they've done is they've actually kind of created little tunnels for larger roots to get in. So where you normally had your lichen and moss, the seed blew in from the wind, now you have this little weed that just grows right here. So we get our grasses and our weeds. What's going to happen is you're actually going to create smaller and smaller particles of rock until they become so small that almost they are really fine and you'll start to recognize it that basically becomes your sand and your dirt this is all dirt is you have little cracks in the rock the rock gets broken into smaller and smaller pieces as the cracks expand and before you know it you have all these tiny microscopic things and they start to mix in with organic matter and maybe one of those little weeds dies and then you just get kind of organic matter on top and eventually you start to get soil so you're going to have to transfer that rock into soil but it's going to take a long time sometimes millions of years let's say slowly this has turned into soil so once you've broken up the rock enough there's still going to be rocks and dirt sure but once you create this soil you're ready for other stuff to start growing you now have broken up rock over millions of years and you can actually get little things in here so now Maybe you get some little shrubs, maybe a couple small little trees, we got our shrubs and our small trees. Again, just like we advanced last time, eventually you're going to get more and more dead organic matter. Eventually, these things are all going to die, which go down into the soil, which actually make the soil richer in nutrients, so that's actually good. You're actually going to get really good soil on the right side, and so you're going to be able to sustain large trees and a whole number of other plants that need really good soil to grow. Once you hit a point, you're gonna hit a point where you've gone from the smallest mosses, the grasses, the shrubs and small trees, 
that is about as much as you can pack into one area. So think of your backyard. You may have one or two trees if you're lucky. If you try to keep putting trees more and more, eventually there's not enough nutrients to go around. Think about if you plant a garden. They usually tell you to space the plants apart. This is largely because you can't just throw all the seeds into one little tiny hole in the center. They won't have enough nutrients and they'll kind of crowd each other out. Eventually you hit a maximum. Eventually you hit enough trees where this is about as big as they're going to get and this is about as many as they're going to get. So we're going to put large trees. But really if this is the last step and everything's built up as much as it can, because remember you also have grass still, you got little shrubs. Everything's all nice and covered. You can only have so many grasses just because these are putting so much shade out. That's about where you're going to hit. This is also called the Climax Community. This is the last step of succession where this is taken over from all the tiny stuff and we are at a maximum amount. Now we're going to throw a little bit of vocab in. Now you understand that this is how the progression of plants and then the environment takes place. A little bit of vocab. So let's go over the vocab of some of these steps. Remember, right here, you get the magma coming up, spewing out. This is going to create the initial rock, okay? This is our bare rock. After a while, you get the little lichens and the mosses all hanging out on it. Again, once it's broken up enough by the moss and the weather, you finally transition from this gray block, which is rock, to soil, which is brown. Now, we can get our grasses and our little weeds. Grass and weeds. Finally, there's enough broken down organic matter and soil that we can now sustain our little shrubs, maybe a few small trees. And finally, we get enough nutrients in the soil where we can grow big giant trees, giant pine trees, or maybe maple trees, or whatever. Basically trees that need a lot of nutrients and are gonna need a lot of ingredients in the soil. That's our climax community. Remember, this is rock, rock, and the rest are soil. So you can see a pretty distinct cut where you can actually kind of be like, okay, well, there's a, it almost looks like there's two categories of succession, and there actually are. First one's gonna be right here. This is called primary succession. This is starting from day one. This is starting from our first bare rock on. Primary succession means it's the first succession to take place. So when you're saying, okay, I need to start an environment out, I really can only start with two things. I can start with the rock being formed by lava or by rock that was never exposed to air being exposed. Like for example, if a glacier melts, you could almost say that's primary succession because that rock has never been exposed and then the ice melts and kind of moves away. And now the mosses and the lichens can start to kind of infiltrate that area that has been completely bare of plants before. Primary succession is the first one. Now, you can actually kind of reset it where if you have a completely established climax community and a giant volcano goes off and wipes out the whole area and turns it to like lava rock, that's primary succession because now you have to start over. The other one is secondary succession. And this starts at this point right here. Secondary succession basically is going to start at the soil point. So primary succession is going to be rock. Secondary succession is going to be soil. Secondary succession is actually going to happen a lot more than primary. You usually may, you may only have one primary succession line for an environment until another volcano like completely wipes out the entire area. You may only have one primary succession line. Secondary succession, however, can always get reset and I'm going to show you why. Say I have some nice soil right here. I have my plants, I got a couple grasses, maybe some big trees, maybe not quite a climax community but pretty close. You can actually reset this back to the first stage. So the first stage is just plain soil right before the grasses and the weeds take over. So you could reset this with a number of things. For example, a fire will burn up all this grass and then all of a sudden you're like oh wait a minute now I've reset this I don't have the grass anymore maybe it wipes out that bush and that tree also so all my plant life that was on top of my soil is now burned up and dead but here's the thing did I revert to rock no I am still soil even though we burned up everything on top with a disaster with fire I mean you can have all kinds of stuff you can have hurricane flood fire 
tornado, some kind of plant disease. You could even have deforestation. Basically, that means whenever we cut down trees, we are kind of resetting and having secondary succession take place again. If you just had a big tornado come through and it knocked out all of my tall trees in my last step, kills that, kills that. Now I'm reset to this step where I just have my grasses and weeds and all my stuff really low to the ground. On the other hand, the fire could wipe out all of it where it kills this and 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 this. Now I'm completely reset to the first step of secondary succession. But it's important to know that I have not gone back to primary. I've never reverted to rock. I'm always going to have the developed soil underneath the layer. You may have like a burnt black crust, yes, but it's not turning into rock. So let me give you an example. All right, so here we go. Here's a farm. We got Farmer Joe over here. Here's Joe. And we got all this corn. And he's got all this corn that he's grown the entire time. Since he's growing a crop, we know this because it's got to be in soil. And Farmer Joe says, all right, it's time to harvest my corn. So he comes by this tractor and he harvests all of this corn. What type of succession is this? This is secondary because what he's done is he's removed the plant life from the top, but still underneath, all underneath his plants, he's got his good soil still. Example number two, Farmer Joe says, all right, here, here come my corn plants. I'm going to harvest them. Good harvest this year. But then a developer contacts him and says, hey, we would like to buy your land because we want to build a new apartment complex. And he says, oh, okay. So he sells to the developer and he sells his land. First thing they do when they're getting ready to build their new giant apartments is they have to do what on the ground? They're gonna probably pour a slab, big thick concrete slab. So even though there's soil underneath we no longer have the ability to just throw seeds on top. There's not developed soil. Concrete is hard for plants to grow from under and come straight up. You may see roots of trees kind of mess up concrete and mess up your driveway, but for the most part, I'm gonna be throwing little seeds all over the place on my concrete and nothing's going to happen. So now we have to realize that this is no longer secondary succession. This is actually primary. This is why when you see uh, post-apocalyptic movies like uh, I Am Legend or um, the Planet of the Apes movies where it's like the cities are there but they look like nobody's been there so they're completely overrun so they're like covered in vines and moss and stuff and all the roads are broken up. This is over years and years of years of no use. People aren't paving in potholes. They aren't fixing cracks in the road. They aren't constantly traveling it. You may even like have just a person continue to walk in an area and it prevents succession from moving because you'll see little paths and grass sometimes where people like to walk off the pass or on the side of a road, like off a sidewalk. They will see little paths where people walk because their feet constantly are pushing on the grass and it doesn't get to develop into bushes and craziness. So if we have Farmer Joe and then Farmer Joe over here gets bitten by a crazy person and is now a zombie and is like part of the zombie outbreak. So Farmer Joe and the rest of the humanity is no longer keeping up with this concrete. So over time, you're gonna get your moss and your lichens. You're gonna get some grasses. And eventually this is gonna start to break up into your soil. So the grasses and all the shrubs and everything can take root. That's pink, that's not right. Eat your trees, your shrubs. This all has to happen over years and years and years and years so that this soil can develop. There you go. Look at that. Primary succession. All because Farmer Joe sold his corn so they can pour concrete. Sorry, Farmer Joe. You guys are all dead. We're going to do a quick little comparison between primary and secondary. So here we are. We got our rock with our lava, mosses and lichens grasses, weeds, shrubs, small trees, and then finally our large trees in our climax community. All right, so here's our quick comparison. First off, if you're going through primary succession and it gets reset, it goes to rock, period. If you're secondary succession, you're already going to have established soil. That's probably the easiest difference that you can tell. Probably right off the bat, that's probably the easiest one to differentiate them. Primary succession be caused probably by the following. Volcano, 
can put concrete in there and maybe even a glacier melting remember if the glacier melts it can expose rock that has never been able to touch the air and grow the mosses and lichens secondary succession is going to be reset by all kinds of disasters tornado hurricane flood lightning fire all that stuff is going to do a reset and move it back a couple steps and finally primary it's a little bit rare it may only happen once in an environment uh, it may only happen once in your lifetime but a couple over time maybe every million years it happens you may see it once and that'll be it i mean think of how many volcano eruptions you've seen on the news. I mean, really, the only ones a lot of y'all have seen is the Hawaii ones recently. That's probably it for y'all. You're like, oh wow, that's the only one I can remember. They don't happen very often because they reset the entire environment. Secondary succession is constantly changing. Every time you go outside and you pull a weed out of your garden or your parents pull it out of the mulch, that's secondary succession. Even pouring mulch could be kind of classified as secondary succession because you cover up all the organic matter like the little weeds and the grass. You're trying to kind of smother them out and they die. And then you have to grow stuff on top. You don't want stuff to grow on top. That's what mulch is for. So you go and you pick the weeds as they go. And then you kind of fall into the disaster where the human and deforestation is the disaster. You're just picking weeds and resetting that environment. So really, when you go pick weeds, you're making sure that your front yard doesn't look like that in your flower beds or that or that you just want that bare soil and in this case you got a bunch of black mulch there just to make sure that your yard looks nice and nothing grows in it once you get into the dirt you are now in secondary succession secondary succession can always have a step reset jump to that step jump to that step then go back then somebody destroys the little bushes then the little bushes grow again, then they grow to small trees, then we cut them all down, then they grow. It's constantly going back and forth. Primary succession is just like, here we go, lava, moss. Alright, once you get that rock going and broken down in the soil, there's a nice distinct line right here that you're not going to go back across. So anytime I give you something on the right of this line, on the right of this squiggly yellow line, that's all gonna be in that secondary succession. There's no way that you can have it jump from a small tr shrub back to rock without the primary succession disasters of volcano, melting glacier, or for humans, concrete. And remember, as these happen, the organisms are gonna have to change and adapt. So the whole time we're worried about energy and how organisms are surviving, they also have to worry about their environment and they have to worry about changing environments and surviving in that and adapting to that and being stronger and mutations and evolution. And this is where you start to click all these pieces back together because now you have all these problems for these species and they got to start figuring it out because if they don't, they're dead.